All right, here are some examples from R6. These are just examples that they brought up for me as if I were a student in the course. Um, so your numbers might be different, but it should be the same format. So number four says decide whether the following statement is true or false. And then it explains that our original equation was 5x cubed plus 4x squared plus 3x plus 1 divided by x plus 2. And that if we got these answers, then that means that our answer is when we take this number, or sorry, this polynomial and divide it by this binomial, we will get 5x squared minus 6x plus 15 plus negative 29 over x plus 2. Um, so if I was going to take this polynomial and divide it by x plus 2, what I would start with is negative 2 up here, 5x to the third means there would be a 5 here, 4x squared would be a 4, 3x would be a 3, and 1 for my constant. This one I would bring straight down. 5 times a negative 2 is a negative 10. Combine the negative 10 with the 4 and get a negative 6. Negative 6 times a negative 2 is a positive 12. 12 plus 3 is a 15. 15 times negative 2 is negative 30. Negative 30 plus 1 is a negative 29. So I got 5, negative 6, 15, negative 29. What you need to do once you have these numbers is look at your leading term. Here our leading term was 5x cubed. That means you take that cubed, you go down one exponent. So instead of x cubed, we're going to start with x squared. And then that first number from um, your bottom row goes here with your x cubed. We chose x cubed because this was x third. x to the third, one less than that is x cubed. Minus 6x plus 15, remainder negative 29. And another way to write the remainder is minus 29 over whatever you were originally dividing by. We were originally dividing by x plus 2. So minus 29 over x plus 2. So in this case, I would agree that that is true, OK? Because I did it on my own. I got the same answer as they did, and I lined it up the same way that theirs is lined up. So I would call number 4 true. Number 5, I might need to start on a different piece of paper, I will run out of room quickly. So what we're doing with synthetic division is you're making sure that you have a term for every descending exponent, 3, 2, 1, 0. 3, 2, 1, 0. 2x to the third plus 8x squared minus 4x plus 7, right? And we would usually put that under the house and then put x minus two over to the side. And then we would start saying, what? how do I get from x to two x cubed? I would have two x squared, right? Instead of doing that, we're going to flip that upside down. What does theirs look like? Ugh. We're gonna flip it upside down. Remember that when we take this x minus two, what we end up doing is we multiply it, right? So if this was two x cubed, we would say we need to multiply x times 2x squared, right? Then we would put 2x squared times x, and we would get 2x cubed. 2 times 2 would be negative 4x squared, right? But then we would subtract it, right? That's one of the steps. Maybe the third step, we'll call it, is you subtract. That is why we take this and we change the sign. So instead of subtracting after I've lined everything up and multiplied it, 
we just subtract by calling that a positive two instead of a negative two. So that's why we're changing that sign. If that's a negative two, we call it a positive two, right? Then this term was a two. This term was an eight. This term was a negative four. And this term was a positive seven. I have to give myself plenty of space because these numbers get big quickly. Then instead of doing all of these steps, okay, I'm just going to bring the two down. Then I take that two. When I put it here, I need to multiply it by this two. So two times two is four. It's a positive two, so two times two is four, so that's just going to get bigger, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, right? Combining these, we don't need to subtract because that negative two became a positive two, that's our subtraction. <laughs> 12 times two is now 24. 24 minus four gives me 20. I still need to be multiplying by two each time. So 20 times two is 40. 40 plus seven is 47. So you're gonna get these crazy big numbers. That doesn't mean you're wrong, okay? So we went from two X cubed plus eight X squared minus four X plus seven to two plus eight minus four plus seven. <clears throat> we accounted for our constant and we accounted for any gaps, which there weren't any as we counted down, okay? That's what, why we would have zeros. Oh, there were no zeros in that one either. Good. Now, when you are trying to decide what does that two mean, what does that 12 mean, what does that 20 mean, and what does that 47 mean, you need to look at the power of your leading term of the original thing you started dividing by. That one's a three, start with one less than that. So that's X squared. So that's two X squared, a positive 12, then just go down the line. This is X squared, this is X. That's a positive 20 x squared x to the first that's not going to have an x right and then if you still have a number left over that's your remainder okay or we can write it as 2x squared plus 12x plus 20 plus because it's a positive 47 over and then take your original x minus 2. All right, so my answer for number five, my quotient would be 2x squared plus 12x plus 20. And if they ask for a remainder, I'm just gonna write the number 47. Good, so there's number five. Number six says we are taking 6x to the 6th minus 2x to the 4th plus 1x squared plus 2, and we're dividing it by x minus 2. All right, that was just write it down big enough so that I can see it. Now, I want to notice that I don't have an x to the 5th. I'm missing x to the 5th. 6, 5, 4, I'm missing x to the 3rd. 2 and I'm missing x to the first. All right, those are all going to be zeros. So when I rewrite this, it's going to be 6x to the sixth plus 0x to the fifth. It's just like a placeholder. Minus 2x to the fourth plus 0x to the third plus 1x squared, right? Again, plus zero X plus two. So it's got a lot longer because we counted, we accounted for every um, missing term, every term that was actually just zero. Zero times X to the fifth is zero, so we're not gonna write it out, right? All right, X minus two, same as before. The minus two becomes a positive two. So I'm gonna put two right here. I don't know. I guess like that. I don't like it, but I'll do it. Six, zero, negative two, zero, one, zero, two. All right, you have it from six, five, four, three, two, one. 
and you have your um, constant. That means you just stop, okay? You stop after this, this is your remainder. Good? <clears throat> Sometimes I forget if it ends in X, I forget to add a zero for the remainder, but make sure you're, or sorry, adding a zero for the constant. So just make sure that you have, if there's a six here, you should actually have seven terms, right? You should have X to the sixth, X to the fifth, X to the fourth, X to the third, X squared, X to the first, and then you should have constant. So if this is a six, you need seven numbers. <laughs> Bring it straight down. Six times two is 12. So here we just multiplied by two. We got 12. Zero and 12 remains 12. We need to multiply 12 by two and we get a positive 24. 24 minus two is 22. I have to multiply that 22 by two and I get 44. Don't be afraid if you're getting huge numbers. It's kind of to be expected. That was a one. Zero and 44 is just a 44. 44 we're now gonna multiply by two. 44 times two is 88. 88 plus one is 89. 89 times is two is 178. 178 plus zero, 178. That times two is 356. And then you're gonna add two to that, so that's 358. Good. All right. This was x to the sixth power. My leading term had an exponent of six. That means I'm going to take this six and give it an exponent one less than six. So six x to the fifth, 12 x to the fourth, 22 x to the third, 44 x squared, 89x, 178 is my constant, remainder 358. Good? All right. Don't even know what number that was. Number six. <clears throat> number seven says use synthetic division to find the quotient and remainder when x to the fifth minus 32 is divided by x minus 2 x to the fifth minus 32 becomes x to the fifth plus zero x to the fourth plus zero x to the third plus zero x squared plus zero x minus 32. Okay, and then we're dividing it by x minus 2. So again, the negative 2 becomes a positive 2. We have 1x to the fifth, 0x to the fourth, 0x to the third, 0x squared, 0x, a negative 32. The 1 comes straight down. 1 times 2 is 2. 2 plus 0 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 and 0 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 and 0 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 and 0 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. Aw, look at that. That's fun. Okay, so this time, what we're going to do is this is x to the fifth. So this is going to be 1x to the fourth. 2x to the third, 4x squared, 8x, 16, no remainder. It's got a remainder of zero. So that was number seven. Number 10, <laughs> 
we have 7x to the third minus 9x squared plus x plus 1, and we're dividing it by x plus 2. That's different. So because this is now a positive 2, our little divisor is going to be a negative 2. 3, 2, 1, 0. Yay. Here we have 7, negative 9, 1, and 1. Right? Okay. 7 comes straight down as 7. 7 times a negative 2 is a negative 14. Negative 14 plus 9. Negative 23. I should say minus 9, but negative 23 times 2. Negative 46. My plus 1 is a negative 45. Times 2 would be 90. Oh, sorry. 7 times a negative 14. 7 times a negative 2 is a negative 14. That's a negative 23. This is going to be a positive 46, right? Because we did negative 23 by a negative 2, so that negative times a negative is a positive. 46 plus 1 is 47. So 47 times negative 2. 47 times a negative 2 is a negative 94. Plus one is a negative 93. So we have 7x cubed becomes 7x squared minus 23x plus 47, remainder negative 93. Um, I wouldn't worry about verifying your work. I would just see if it's right in my math lab. Then they say divide c squared plus 15c plus 54 by c plus 9. That means I can turn it into negative 9, 1, 15, 54, right? 1 just comes straight down. 1 times a negative 9 is a negative 9. Negative 9 and 15 is a 6. 6 times negative 9? Negative 54. That's 0. So here I started with c squared, and my answer is just going to be c to the first plus 6. No remainder. All right, I hope that helps.